What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today we're having a good look at Particle System. This is quite a talk heavy um, video. It has no package today. We're not actually supplying those package for the sole reason that it's very simple stuff that you can just reproduce right there. I don't want to have that on my website basically. And my art doesn't look so good, but hey, we end up with something that, that's decent looking. Um, so we'll be having a look at most of the section over here on the right hand side and also how to create those small effects over here, very simple stuff, but hey, they do the job. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy and let's get started. So once again, we have an empty scene that has nothing but a couple of artwork and those are very simple. Today, since we're not having a package, I'll just show you real quick what the artwork is. Anything um, I think that you guys can produce would be decent. Uh, what I'm saying is that my art is not good looking at all. Here's what I have. I have basically something that has transparency on the edge here. Doesn't have to do that. Um, and it's like a spike shape. Also for my small wind particle, it has an outline. Doesn't really match our style right here, but hey, that's what I'll be using. So those simple shapes will do. Now it's also important that you create a material for those as well. So let me do that real quick. Now what we're going to do is go under shader, make sure it is a particle and I'll do unlit because I don't want light to affect this one. And we'll go down the wind material and do the exact same thing. We might have to come back and put those on um, fade in a moment, but for now, let's leave them up back. Okay, so to create a particle, what you can do is create an empty game object and then add, say, a particle on it, particle system on it like this one, or you can also right click, I believe, go under effects and then particle system, which is basically the exact same thing. Um, let's put that in the center, reset the rotation so we can have a look at what this is. This is the default one we get. Now, um, we're gonna create something. We're actually gonna go through the whole particle system component and we'll look at what every single one of these do. And at the same time, we'll be recreating the Spock effect we have over here. So having that said, Let's start with the first section. The first section is actually hidden under particle systems. So you have to click on this big thing over here, open it up, and then you see um, what this is. All right, so starting at the top, we have duration. Duration is only really only matters when you have um, burst emission. If you have something that is always put out constantly, like this, this one right here we see, then it doesn't really matter so much. Um, but if you do have, say, a burst, which are gonna be down here in a moment, then it's gonna be like, how long do we wait before we put out another burst? Looping simply means, are we going to start again once this is done? So if you had a burst, like we mentioned, let's actually do it. Let's add the burst, right? And remove the rate over time. So here's what I've done. I removed the rate over time, so we don't have something coming out all the time. Instead, we have a burst happening. Um, so it pulls out 30 particles. And then what happens if we have something that's looping, it's gonna do it again. But if we don't, as you can see, it just stopped. Now going back to duration, if we put one second, it's gonna go in a burst every one second. Okay, now assuming you have something that takes a while to build up in your engine, so if we press on play right here, you're going to see this, right? You're going to see this thing pops up and eventually the screen gets full, you know, you, you, get, you get to see a lot more. But if you have something that is pre-warmed, it means it's gonna run before the game actually shows. So right away, we should see a lot of these, as you can see. We did not have a buildup whatsoever, like this one. Instead, it was pre-warmed, and then uh, what you saw is like that much particle right away. Next up, we have the start delay. How long are you going to wait before you actually output particles? Now, this cannot be used with the pre-warm, simply because if you pre-warm something, you don't put a delay on it, usually. Um, and then the lifetime is a really important one. You play a lot with the lifetime. Lifetime is how long this particle right here is going to last. Right now we have it on five seconds. If we put it on one, you'll see that they don't really last that long. In fact, they don't even last two cycles. Let's put it on two and it's gonna look something like that. Start speed is how fast you're gonna start at the beginning. You can put them very slow, you can put them very high. Um, yeah, so if we're trying to recreate this kind of little effect I had going on, what we would do over here is I would put a lifetime of three, so I have something that goes on for around, you know, for a little bit. Of course, feel free to modify those values as much as you want. All of these are tweakable. Um, and as far as my speed goes, I actually didn't move them at all. So I'm gonna put my speed on zero. So we have a big chunk of particle just there. And that's what I'll be using for that effect. Now, 
what I did have um, going on for me is a different size. So I had a size of 0 0.5. However, I wanted to have some little variation in between um, some of the particles. So here is what I've done. Now, something that's really awesome is that all these nice value on the right hand side, you see them, you can play with them quite a lot. It, it does a lot of changes to your particle, but you can also add a little bit of random in there if you have a drop down arrow next to it. So if we head over to the, the start size, let's say I don't always want them to be 0 0.5. I could want them to be 0 0.5, sometimes 0 0.7. I, you know, it could vary. You could go down here and say, hey, I want a random in between two constant, which means, okay, well, it could be in between 0 0.5, that's my minimum, but it could also be 1.1. And now we end up with something that a little bit more, well, it's hard to tell right now because we have, we have such a big mess. So let me quickly go through that. We're gonna skip a step. I'm going to close this one off, close this one off, go at the very bottom in the renderer and actually set my material. So I'll drag and drop my spark material right in here. Now we'll see that we didn't set it on fade. So let's go under um, our shader and then we'll see that under fade. Okay, so having that done, back on our sparks and also back in the particle system. We now have different size. So sometimes you see them big, sometimes you don't see them so big and that's exactly what we'd like for our effect. Now do know that earlier we removed the speed completely. That is what you get if you had speed. It's already being thrown out in that direction. Now, um, if we put it on zero, it doesn't mean it, it, it can't really move. You can always play with the gravity as well. You can always have a gravity modifier. So if we go over here and say input 0 0.1, you'll see that we actually go up and this is on top of speed. So if we go back, add some speed, you'll see it curve and follow the gravity, which could lead you to some very, very nice effects. In my case, I don't have any gravity modifier and also don't have any speed. Going back in my field, start rotation is what you'd think it is. So if you play around with it, you'll see what is the rotation of your particle. Now, something really cool with this is that you could also have random in between two constants. You could say, okay, well, I want something in between zero and 360 degrees, which you know gives you a random rotation. Let's put that back on zero because we don't need that in our case. So next up, we have the start color, which you can just play around with your color. You can also set the alpha of it. So that's really important. However, I like to use mine in, um, well, we'll be changing the color over lifetime a little bit further in this tutorial. I don't like using the start color here so much. Uh, we already went with the gravity when fire. yep. Simulation space, this is very important. So right now we're gonna put it on local, but once we do our other particle, our, our smoke particle, you wanna be putting that most likely on the world. So here is what, what is going to happen. So now I didn't have any example to show you in the other project, but here it is. This is in local space going left to right with my particle beneath me. And this is in world space. So this is the kind of thing you want if you have um, effect like on something that's moving just like the player. Next up, we have the simulation speed, which I'm not really familiar with, but I would say that this is the equivalent of time scale. So time that time scale, but for a particle system, which behave on a different um, time frame. So I will be skipping the next two, delta time and also scaling mode because I'm unfamiliar with them. They do have a smart description over here, but I'm not going to read that out for you. You can read it yourself. Um, play on the wake is, is really important though. So assuming you have a ring, like in this case, um, I have my small effect over here, my spark effect. If I want this to run at the beginning, I would enable play on the wake. So right from the get go, when I open up my scene, I am going to see this running. However, this is something special that I only want it to be enabled once I hit a switch or something like that. So I remove play on the wake and now it's actually not running in my game at all. So you don't see it over here. But if I jump on this, my timer goes out. Actually, my timer doesn't even need to go out. It spawns after that. So this is play on the wake. When I start the game, is it going to be running already? Emitter velocity, I'm not so familiar with either. So I'll skip. Uh, maximum particle of a thousand is just how many particles you can see at the same time. If we put that on 30, you're going to see that our output is now limited. So we like to leave that on thousand and just scale down the amount of emission we have usually. This one over here is super cool. It's called a stop action. So what happened when the particle is stopped? Do we disable this object? Do we destroy it? Or do we call a callback? Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I think it's really useful in some, in some very specific case where you just want to spawn an effect once and then, hey, let's just get rid of it in the scene completely. Or, hey, let's disable it, but in our code, we kept it somewhere in a pool and we can re-enable it when we need to. 
And then calling is what happened when this is off screen. So what kind of behavior do you want to have when it's off screen? Do we catch up? Do we always simulate? If you put it on always simulate, you're going to expect to have this laying down in your memory all the time. So just be really, really careful with this one. Um, usually automatic does a good job though. And this last one, I never really used it, but I think it could be quite cool for um, say rain effect or something that takes the whole screen and, and you just want you just want it to, to be in the whole screen like this, right? Um, what it does is that it fills up the screen with all the particle it can until it hits the limit. So our limit is, five, uh, well actually it's 1000 right now, put that in 500 so we stop lagging. But um, that's what it does basically, it just, it just doesn't die. So there's no lifetime on these. Instead, it's just, hey, let's just put as many particles as we need. And when we create some new, we're going to have to re uh, remove some of the old one. And now let's head over to emission. We used emission earlier for burst. I actually don't want to have a burst in this case. So let me try and remove it. Um, here it is. So I removed the emission. Instead, I want to build a rate over time. So I want eight particle to be spawned every second instead. You could also have both of them. So you could have burst on top of your rate over time, um, which is not going to be used in our case. But as you saw, burst is just like one, you, you unleash one batch at the same time and you tell that how many do you want exactly um, okay so next up is shape very important shape is going to determine where these are actually being um, created from and in which direction they go I like using the cone in a lot of cases because you can modify it in such way that you can pretty much create a lot of different shapes so here's what I've done so basically I put the radius thickness on zero which meant that only particle could be spawned on the line now. So you can't spawn them in the center. They all spawn directly on the line. If you put it on one, they can spawn anywhere from within the circle. I did not want that. So I wanted something like this. Next up, we have the radius, which is just above it. Of course, it's how big this is. So I'll quickly go and change the rotation in X to minus 90. So I can start having this, this small feeling that we had a little bit earlier. And I just realized that I do have speed over here and it bothers me quite a lot. Um, I don't know why I had speed, but here I just removed my speed once more. Now we end up with something like this, which is a little bit more um, looking like what we wanted in the first place. However, we're not completely there just yet. Like it's very, very uneven. So to fix that being uneven, what you can do is head over to the mode over here. If you're using an arc like I am, this is only for cone. Um, well, this is for cone and a couple of other things. You can actually have something like loop or ping pong. And this is going to create stuff and then come back to it um, in a very linear manner. So it's going to spawn them, as you can see here, uh, exactly the same distance in between each other, which is what I've used for the effect. Now, if we change the speed of it, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So we start having this type of effect. The exact value I was using on the other one was 0 0.4 in speed. Of course, you're encouraged to look around these and play around. Uh, particle system is quite nice because you get a visual output of, of something right away. And that's always very, very cool. So that, that is going to be it for the shape. I don't want to go over all the other one. There is so many, um, but I encourage that you have a look over them. Velocity over lifetime is going to give you a movement over time. So if we put that on something like this, you can get some awesome effect, really. It just it doesn't take much to give you some sort of effect uh, that you could want in your game. So this is actually quite cool. And you know what? We could actually implement this on top of our game. So we could have, we could have a movement like that on top of the one we're already having. So maybe like this, if we play around with the rate over time, we can fill the whole circle. So maybe 10. Yep, and we could up our lifetime just a, a tiny bit. So we have something like that, yeah. So already there, this is movement over time, actually, so velocity over time. Now, limit velocity over lifetime, I'll go over this one with the second particle system. I don't want to do it with this one. Um, it, it just gives you a nice dampening effect if your particle are going too fast, which is very useful for explosion and stuff that's gonna be slowed by uh, air drag, you could say. Inherit velocity is again affecting your speed. Would be useful if the particle comes out of the player while he's running or something like that. Force over lifetime is very similar to gravity. So it's gravity, but you can play around which axis you want, um, basically. So uh, let me just try and recreate gravity. That would be it. Again, could give some very, very cool effect. Color over lifetime. This one is really, really cool. 
Um, we'll be using it with a second system. I won't be using it right now, but I usually use it um, when I want my particle to have a nice fade in and fade out. You can see me trying to do something really quickly here. You get this type of effect, which is, um, you know, it's not bad for the amount of work that was put into it. Let's try that here. So they fade in and then they fade out. Yeah, so I'm not going to be using it for this one, but it's something that could be quite useful. Size over lifetime is, hey, can we modify our speed over lifetime? And what's cool with this one is that um, you can do it on separate axes as well, which is something I do use for this system. So I do not actually want to change the X, neither the Z, but I want the Y to, mod to be modified just a little bit. So here's what I'll do. I'll go on the X, put that on one. So it's always one in size. The Z, put that on one. But Y, what I do is I put it on one, but then I'll create, say, another value in the center over here. And I'll put the value on two. Now, for some reason, I can't put my, uh, I can't put the key at two, which is something I'm able to do usually. If I just edit manually and go here, press on two. It usually is two, but right now I don't get to have it and I don't know why. So let me just put some weird value in here. Something like that. Now you'll notice that we have a very weird variation of size in Y over time. And this is what size over lifetime is. It's pretty self-explanatory. So if you go fast, if the particle goes fast, then it's gonna have different speed um, based on the value you put in here. Rotation over lifetime. This one is also cool because you get to have something that rotates over lifetime. It's as simple as that. If you wanna give it some random, do as, as we did before. So you could go here and say, hey, over lifetime, rotate by only this or Put a bigger value if you want them to move in a bit of a different manner and you end up with some very nice effect as well again rotation by speed is just how fast you're going to rotate based on your speed next up is external forces and this one i am not very very sure i never really used it but i know it has to do with the other particle um, system force field maybe this one in fact um, and it would behave like wind so basically how are you being affected by some other particle trigger, say win in this case. Next up is noise, and this one affects movement only. So uh, I'm just going to leave it in there. You can play around with the value if you want. Um, it affects the movement. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, we can also have collision on particles. So you can have like collider on top of these collision, and they could actually interact with the floor. Not only that, but you can also have triggers when they do interact with something, um, which would just give you a lot of option that you can do with code. Okay, next up we have sub emitter. So do we have a particle system in our particle system? Um, I'm not going to get into that, but here, let's have a try here. If we put particle system one in this one, what is going to happen? I think I just crashed the engine. All right, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but I'll just leave it like that. Um, sub emitter is having particles with other particles another technique to have that is just to stack your particle system under a game object and just play it from there um, yeah not very familiar with sub emitters as you could probably tell texture sheet animation is if you had like a sprite sheet of a very specific particle like you had a bombed effect that would have multiple frame of animation in it you could put it in the and, um, and play that animation on top of being played in a particle system. I'm not going to get into lighting because I am not familiar with it. Um, trail, however, is something I'm a little bit familiar with. We use it during the Glide tutorial. We like to have nice trail following us um, around. So as we were moving particle, we had a nice little effect we needed. Now, if you wanna use trails, you have to go down in the renderer and actually set a material for it, which we don't have right now, but we can use a default one so you can see a little bit how it works. So yeah, you can end up having very cool effect. Let's go under noise, that's gonna show it a little bit better. So yeah, that's trail. <laughs> if you wanted visual for trail, this is trail. And as far as custom data goes, I am not familiar with it, um, but it's custom data for your particle. So it's something you could be accessing from script or shader. Next up, and the final one, finally, the renderer. Okay, so how do we render our particle? Billboard is gonna mean that the particle is always gonna be looking towards us. If it's a stretch billboard, uh, well, it's always looking towards us. And then on top of that, it's disgusting. Cool. Horizontal billboard is you're always going to be facing, well, you're always gonna be on the horizontal axis, no matter what the angle of your camera is. 
um, you know, the angle of the camera is what usually matters in this. As you can see, if I'm looking at my particle system from above in billboard, it always shows up just like in the texture, even from below. So this could look weird sometime or it could look awesome all the time. The one cool thing to consider over here is the mesh. So sometimes it's actually cool to output a 3D object in the space. And let's go under wireframe so you can see what I'm talking about. This is actually, is that a cube? Yeah, that's a cube, but you can also output say cylinders or quads or spheres with your particle on top of it. And guys, I will skip you the rest because it's all related to rendering and I am not really familiar with it. So now that we have this effect, I'll quickly go over how I've done the other effect as well because, because it's using the velocity over lifetime and I wanted to show you that before we end this tutorial. Okay, so here we have a completely different particle system. This one, as you could tell already, is using burst. It's using a lot of speed. Here is what we'll be doing. We'll be demonstrating what is limit velocity over lifetime. If you enable it and we start playing around with the value just a tiny bit, you're gonna see that there's a little bit of drag going on. So if we put our speed on 0.5 and we put dampen, as soon as we put dampen, you'll see our particle slow down by quite a lot. So here they start very fast and then they end up being very slow. And let me give a little bit more room. And we end up like an effect like that, which is very cool for explosion actually. So on top of that, uh, if you had like a little explosion going on here, you could also have a gravity modifier to it because it would raise rise up in the air a little bit so you'd have something like that so the dust would rise after that um what else you could do is have these change color so at the beginning they could be like like a blast color they could be a little bit more lit and at the end they just merge with the air they just merge with the color they, they merge with alpha basically so you could go under color over lifetime um, I'll be removing this one here. I want it to have color when it starts, but then at the end, towards the end, you can see it like fade in opacity as well. Um, yeah, and that's actually where I'll be ending because I'm I'm just gonna be here forever if I don't uh, stop now. But yeah, you could also rotate these over time. You could give them different rotation. You could give them different um, size. You could have external force affect that you could stack another another particle system on top of it to make it look even better. But as I said, this is actually where I'll be ending today, guys. So this was a lot of talk, a lot of rumble, but we had a good look at the particle system and most of its functionality. Some of them that I don't really know, I'm not really familiar with, but most of them that I've showed today, you can create something quite cool with. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy. Keep liking the videos, keep sharing them around. It helps me a lot, quite a lot, actually. Check out the Patreon page and why not pledge yourself? That would be something else. All right, guys, thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. But as I said, this is actually where I'll be ending today, guys. So this was a lot of talk, a lot of rumble, but we had a good look at the particle system and most of its functionality. Some of them that I don't really know, I'm not really familiar with, but most of them, that I've showed today, you can create something quite cool with it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy. Keep liking the videos, keep sharing them around. It helps me a lot, quite a lot, actually. Check out the Patreon page and why not pledge yourself? That would be something else. All right, guys, thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.